Guys, today we're going to be trying to figure out which of the two batteries in this diesel Suburban, this guy on the passenger side or that guy on the driver's side, has gotten a little weak. Start's gotten a, um, a little weak and the voltage meter is showing me that probably one of these guys needs to go. Now, usually when this used to happen, I used to just swap them both out, but um, I decided this time I'd try something different. I picked up this tool here at Harbor Freight today. Just opened it. You know, I'm not going to do like an unboxing thing because it's just this in the box along with the user manual. There's not, nothing special about it. However, this is a knockoff of a Schumacher BT100 battery load tester, and it's a lot cheaper. Uh, it was uh, on sale for $19.99, and then I had 20% off, so pretty good deal. This guy will test whether a, a given battery is good under load. So rather than just using a voltmeter and seeing how much voltage is on, it's not enough to test a, a vehicle battery. You also need to put a load across it and see if it can handle that drain simulating the starter motor. And this guy has a, a big resistor inside that does like 100 uh, amps of resistance. So what we're going to do, since this is a double, and you guys have a single truck, it's just going to be one of what I do. I'm going to start testing this one, but in order to test this isolated, I'm going to walk over to the other side, I'm going to disconnect the other battery. Just trying to make sure that I, I don't have um, any cross wiring so that I know for sure that I'm actually testing the individual battery and I can judge that that's the one that's actually the one with the problem. And you probably, probably could leave the negative on, but I'm not going to do that because I just want to make sure it's totally isolated. On these diesels, at least on this Suburban here, this is a real, really bad design. I wish GM had like, you know, cut a notch out of this. This is normally the bracket where on a gasoline engine, the um, engine control module would sit, but it doesn't sit here on a diesel. So it's very close and, you know, it's very easy to short this out. So I like to take a glove or a rag or something that I can put in here and act as an insulator so that I don't short anything out while I'm trying to remove this. And then when I'm done, um, and the reason I usually like to use a rag, when I'm done, I can actually put the rag on top of the positive battery terminal and protect it from dangling around or coming into contact with ground somewhere else. This guy is on here really tight. There he goes. Okay. So this battery on the driver's side is actually the older of the two may actually be the one that ends up going, but we'll test the other side first. So I'm just going to go stick this on here so that he doesn't cause any shorts or anything. And now we're going to go back to the other side. And now I'm going to hook up this tester. So I've not used this guy before. I've used one similar to it in the past. Basically just, you know, you're going to put it on like a pair of jumper cables. Put it on the negative and you could have put it on the positive. And when you first put it on, it's going to act like a voltmeter. So it's, it's got a basically a, a scale on the top for 6 volt batteries and a scale along the bottom for 12 volt batteries. So it's showing us that we got 12 volts. It's got a momentary switch down here. We're going to hold it down according to the owner's uh, user's manual that came with this. It says you're going to hold it down for 5 seconds. That's 5 seconds only. And that'll be enough of a charge. And we're going to watch if this needle uh, drifts back into um, uh, uh, the bad or weak area when we do that. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So it says this battery is kind of borderline, right? It, it drifted back over to right on the border at 600 on the green area and right on the weak area. So now let's compare what we get on the other side. So I'm going to disconnect this guy. And then in order to do this test, I'm actually going to hook these guys back up. Just, you know, if you have a bolt or something, you could probably put it in the battery to give you something to grab onto. But uh, I don't have anything handy with the right thread. So I'm just going to put the cable back on and grab the head of the cable bolt. And we'll test this battery. Now, obviously, after I put this one back on, I'm going to have to go back on the other side and take that one off. And we'll see how this guy reads. The other thing this tool will do is you can... Um, put it on the battery uh, with both of these connected and start it up and it'll give you a readout if you look down here it'll show you on the very far side it'll talk about the charging system and in the manual it talks about you can actually hook it up while you're you got everything running and it'll give you a, an understanding of how much your alternator is putting out so that you can see if you got a charging problem on the alternator side okay you got this guy back on and now we're just going to pop the other side off 
You can see it's a very, very fast process. There's not a lot of, uh, not a lot to this guy. Hardest thing is just getting these cables on and off twice because I've got dual batteries. As soon as we pop this guy off and then I want to go back over, I realize I left my glove on the other side that I'm going to use to stick the cables in there. Grab that guy. Just give me a minute to get this thing all the way out. All right, there he goes. Take him out. Glove him up. Just, just touch ground. You can put something, you can wrap a, a rag around here. You can get a bungee cord, whatever your choice is, just to keep it from dropping down near the frame or something causing a problem. Okay, now let's test the battery on this side. Same deal. We're going to do negative and positive. And you know what? I need to get one more glove here because I realized I only brought one out for that space that we talked about earlier. So I'm just going to pop inside my garage for a second and grab an additional glove that we can use to insulate that corner bracket out so we don't short anything. And then we'll pop that connector on for the load tester and we'll see what we get on this driver's side battery in comparison. All right. Okay, so we see on this side right off the bat, we're not even quite getting 12 volts. So this may be the one of the two that's weakest. And we're going to go do our five second test. One, two, three, four, five. This guy's the bad one. This is the one I'm going to replace. The other one I'm going to presume is just showing borderline because for the last few days, maybe even a week, that guy on that side has been bearing all the burden of trying to start this diesel engine. So we're going to swap this guy out, put a new battery in, retest it, and I expect that we're going to have a much better outcome and a much more stronger starting. Anyway, I hope that helps you out to see this particular type of tool in action. Like I said, it's a, it's a clone of the uh, Schumacher Electric BT100. I see those uh, on eBay and Amazon going for anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks. This guy here, like I said, is under 20. It's exact same kind of thing. There's uh, a different flavor of this type of tool that's used by the GM dealer, um, made by uh, Kentmore SPX, I think, is uh, the two manufacturers. And it runs you about 60 to 70, sometimes 80. It can do more alternator type testing, and you can get it either with a screen like this, or sometimes it can either be digital. But this is the one I chose, and I'm very happy with my purchase. So hope this helps you out. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.